Well, as we've been discussing, uncertainty is the new normal and being prepared is essential, particularly when you live in a flood prone area. Flood resilient communities are created by a partnership of organisations, community groups and individuals. Catherine Jacob visited Cumbria to learn about the various measures that are being taken there to protect homes and livelihoods. Penrith Road in Keswick is no stranger to flooding. This was 2015, the gushing river overflowing into the park, filmed by a local resident along with the surface water flooding on the nearby road. Five years on, things are different. So here's our newest pumping station, Penrith mm -hmm. Road. Mm -hmm. The council's flood development manager showed me their new pumping station, an integral part of a Cumbria flood partnership £2 million so scheme to protect around 100, 100 homes plus highways and businesses in the area. In the case of flooding, engineers receive a text message to alert them. If we get an event here in Penrith, we know that the pumping station, once the, uh, the pumps become inundated with water to a certain level, they will kick in and start forcing water into the river. We know that then the storage basin above will limit the amount of water that's trying to come through the pipes so that we won't have any overland flow coming through the streets. So the two work together, complementing one another, to ensure that there's no flooding within Keswick. Well, you can see from here why Keswick is so vulnerable to flooding. The properties sit in a bowl at the bottom of the mountains and the water runs off the fells down to this point. Of course, when development gets in the way, it reduces the floodplains, exacerbating the problem. Environmental land management is one of the changes to the future we're really keen to take on board because we know that when we've been looking at schemes run by the river trusts, that they've actually got farmers who've aerated the land. That land actually is better off because the nutrients they put on it, the water gets into it, and there's far less runoff, so there's far less water for us to deal with when it comes to water coming into the community. Other experts agree that traditional approaches to flooding don't address the underlying causes. At Rewilding Britain, they believe managing flood risk naturally is a cheaper and more sustainable solution. Well, rewilding is all about the restoration of natural processes towards the point where nature is taking care of itself. And where those things have been measured, particularly in upland situations, restoration of peat bog, in introduction of leaky dams, beaver introduction, for example, in more low-lying areas, consistently where those things have been measured on the ground, they have shown a reduction in flood peak of 20 to 30%. We are currently spending less than 1% of the capital program of the Environment Agency on natural flood management, that is nowhere near enough. My view is the funding should be around 10 to 20 percent of the national budget on natural flood management. The owners of this cottage in nearby Kirkby Stephen have battled two floods. In 2015, floods triggered by storms Desmond and Eva left the ground floor under 10 inches of water. David and Tina Galloway explained why they've taken preventative action to make their property more resilient to flooding. This house only floods when you had a long period of wet weather and then 24 hours of relentless rain, something like that, and the river just can't take any more. It tends to come up very quickly and go down quite quickly as well. Yeah. But it's, it's basically when the, the fells 10, 15 miles away to the south get completely waterlogged and everything just runs straight off. David and Tina have spent £10,000 benefiting from a £5,000 council grant to try to keep the water out. Inside, they've replaced carpets with tiles and raised the boiler and appliances up off the floor. They showed me the changes they've made outside too. To keep the water away from the house, we had this wall built. I mean, it looks like an ordinary garden wall, but actually it's made of concrete blocks. And then the high-tech flood prevention at the gate is just a bit of plywood which slots down with some wedges to make it tight against the sandstone plinth. When the gravel gets underwater, we put this pump down into the sump. Um, well, that, that, that fills within no a minute time or less. Yes. It's a trouble with living at the bottom of a bank. Yes, <laughs> near a river. <laughs> Flooding costs the economy just over a billion pounds a year. And with climate change exacerbating the problem, 
It's clear that communities who live with the ongoing threat are having to adapt to find more innovative solutions to defend themselves.